So thank you very much for the introduction. So today uh, we are gonna show you so how how basically you can use Cumulosity IoT to manage containers together with ThinEdge. So how uh, ThinEdge plugins can extend the functionalities of uh, ThinEdge and how also micro front ends can extend the functionalities UI wise on the Cumulosity side. Um, let me. So now two screens a little bit difficult. So I mean, you know that that picture or that architecture, right? So I mean, this is the the framework for, from ThinEdge that basically shows that we have an MQTT broker and working with uh, several applications or plugins that can extend the functionalities of ThinEdge. And what you see here on the right side is basically that you can have multiple different yeah cloud vendors, so to say, uh, such as for example uh, Azure. Um, or uh, AWS, but also uh, Cumulosity IT. And this is why I'm here today, because I, I'm working for Software AG uh, and basically showing you today how container management can be achieved with Cumulosity IoT uh, together with ThinEdge IO. And when we talk about Cumulosity IoT, then uh, this is a, a multi tenant IoT platform. Um, that is highly scalable, uh, works with multiple thousand, even million, millions of devices, and um, um, has a huge stack of functionalities, uh, which works in many different environments, such as uh, cloud, uh, um, cloud on uh, clouds on hyperscalers such as Azure or AWS, um, or even in on-premises or edge deployments. So um, we are cloud agnostic in that way. Uh, such that customers that do not want to go to the cloud, for example, can also do the full stack of these functionalities here on a dedicated edge instance, for example. And uh, when Cumulosity started, um, actually quite a couple of years ago, uh, they started with the initial functionality stack that was device connectivity and management, because all the other use cases you see in, in terms of uh, IoT use cases such as dashboarding, condition monitoring, data visualization, and even the uh, higher aggregated use cases such as integration to ticketing systems, for example, or um, uh, stuff like predictive maintenance, requires that your sensors, your devices, your your whatever the thing is you want to connect needs to be connected and maintainable and manageable uh, via remote because you do not want to drive around and, and do patching and firmware uh, updates or configurations uh, all over the world via, via people. Uh, and when we talk about uh, device management, we actually mean the full life cycle of devices. So when a device is born, so provision and, and organizing it, um, so basically, what, what is this device? Uh, who does it belong to? So all the stuff about identity management certificates. Um, but even in the while while it's running and working and doing what it should do, um, uh, watching it, so to say, so monitoring it, seeing that uh, some device data is uh, created, how it's configured, um, and then doing some troubleshooting or diagnosis such as Ruben just showed it via the uh, uh, remote access or getting some log files and then decommission it. For example, if you ship it to another customer, um, you you sell it, you you change parts, etc. So, so Cumulosity IoT offers here the full stack of all functionalities that is needed alongside the device cycle, uh, the, the device lifecycle. And today we are Focusing, so I, I could give like a talk for every of these bubbles, like for an hour, but today we are, we are basically jumping into the software management part and um, we'll show you uh, how Cumulosity IT handles the software management. And for that, we are jumping into a tenant. So that's a demo tenant. Um, if you want to, you can create your own uh, trial uh, demo tenant. Um, Phil will put in the link later on in the chat. Um, and what you can basically do here in the application that is called the device management, um, you can divide, you can manage your devices and management is in both directions, meaning you could, for example, first of all, see what your device is doing. So whether it's connected or not, how it consists of. So what is my, what's the name of the device? When was it last updated? When was it created? What, what version of ThinEdge is running here? So. Basically, it's meta information to the device. 
And then here on the left side, you have multiple tabs where all the different device management uh, functionalities or capabilities are, are located. So for example, configuration management that is already um, uh, solved with ThinHIO, for example, or uh, requesting log files. Um, and uh, what also Ruben showed with the remote access via, for example, SSH and VNC. And of course, there's a tab software, and there comes uh, already uh, something that is very generic in the Cumulosity speak. Uh, is we we basically software is a very generic approach here. So software can be anything for for us, right? So uh, depending on how you package something, we talk about something we call a software type. So software types can be, and just give you some impressions, and and Phil will put in a. a uh, 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 Paul, uh, in, in a couple of seconds. Um, so software types can be, for example, Docker Composes. Uh, so then it's basically a Docker Compose YAML. Or it can be Docker Images, uh, APKs, binaries, executable files. So anything that that can be a software from our point of view. And we declare it with uh, something we call a software type. Meaning that with this uh, functionality here, you could, for example, update software in here of a certain type. So, for example, I've run here in RabbitMQ broker on my ThinEdge device. So I can update that, for example. I could delete the MongoDB that is running here, or I can even install new software. Um, for example, the, I don't know, VPN tool. don't know what it is, but we do have that here. And with that uh, functionalities here, I can update, delete, or install any type of software. And ThinEdge solves this with, uh, with a software management plugins for various types of software types. There was a lot of types in it. So, I mean, of course, if I do have a Docker container, this installation is different than if I have a Docker Compose, or if I do have a Debian package, and depending on that, the ThinEdge handles this differently via plugins. So to give you an impression, uh, what is basically happening behind the scenes, if I do that in terms of software management, then I do have my broker that is for the inter-process communication, and I do have the MQTT bridge that is basically taking care that um, internal messages on certain topics are up mapped to what Cumulosity IT um, requires to understand that uh, there should something happen. And then I do have the CDY agent that is basically understanding, okay, there's now a software update for software type Dogger, for example, of a certain yeah, Dogger container or a binary or an URL. And then it basically looks which plugin it should use, right? So a software plugin, very generic. So it uses the Dogger plugin, it uses the uh, APT plugin or whatever plugin is needed uh, for the particular software type. And then, of course, doing it and uh, getting uh, sending back the information to the Cumulosity IoT. The thing now, and this is why I'm shifting now to the demo again, this view is very generic. So meaning that um, we made it that way that it works basically for all types of software uh, that I want to install. but. Uh, when we are talking now about Docker, and there would be a question whether you are using containerization uh, and what type of containerization you are using, um, we see that, for example, Docker or Podman or even Docker Compose require actually a, a different type of visualization, right? So this view in terms of, okay, I see that RabbitMQ as a container is running, but I have no clue about commands, port mapping, et cetera that this view is not working for people that really want to manage the containers running on the devices. And Cumulosity is very extensible here in, in the way that you can create um, via um, micro frontends own additions to the standard platform. So uh, if I say, for example, I want to have an own container view, I can basically just add that my own. And this is what we did here. So we added a container tab and now we created the view as we thought it might make sense. So I do have here a view uh, in a grid view where I can basically see all my containers. So you see MongoDB is running here with the, with the status it's up. The Postgres database in, uh, in as a container basically just exited. Um, 
RabbitMQ is still running, or the MQTT broker is locally running, since then it requires that, for example. And with this three dots in here, I have the possibility to yeah, restart the container, to stop it or to start it if it's stopped, or even to jump in into that container and see, for example, that this status is uh, running since eight hours um, and that I have a particular container ID here that I have a command with, uh, the, with which the container was initially started, that the network is bridged, uh, how much of the file system is used, etc. So I can basically extend it to any information that Docker PS is giving me. Um, so if you check that in here, so I just opened the command um, here, and if I do Docker PS, then you would basically see that all the information here of, uh, for example, the broker is what I'm showing here in the container tab of Cumulosity IoT. And since Docker Compose is a very nice way to yeah compose something out of containers <laughs> uh, we could even do that with container groups so this is how we named them to have it a little bit more generic in terms of um, other containerizations uh, or technologies and in here i have for example now a docker compose file that is called edge computing pipeline uh, so for example if i'm doing something with the jupyter nodes in terms of python that is subscribing to something writing into a local mysql database and having a little uh, um, nginx uh, web uh, web server i can do that with that for example and here you see that the docker compose file basically consists of several containers so jupyter nodes and again i can open that here with a container id again file system what ports are mapped um, what uh, and do that also with the other um, containers and can, can even jump into the different containers again to see, for example, that this um, MySQL database container in the Docker Compose file is running uh, and up since eight hours, for example. So a very nice way to extend views uh, to create the very generic view of software, which is actually very generic, uh, and abstract that actually in a, in a way that I can use that for a, a certain software type. And in this example today, it was basically containers and container groups. And if we just check what is happening on uh, behind the scenes uh, way again, um, as you have seen that, uh, we basically now have a Docker and a Docker Compose plugin that are running and that are also in the GitHub repository. It basically does the handling of I want to install a Docker container, I want to install a Docker Compose, and it's handling via the C8Y agent the um, yeah the whole distribution about uh, or the communication with the Docker host, so to say. And what we additionally have, and there's also in the repo where we will share the link with you, that we do have this attached container plugin. So basically also also known as a Docker host data mapper. So it's it's basically asking Docker info or Docker PS for information about the different containers and publishing that to the broker that is mapping that to Comulosity IoT data model. Thus, I can show then the actual status and all the information you just saw recently on the container and container groups um, tab in the device management of Comulosity IoT. And with that, um, yeah, just showing that this is the GitHub repo. Uh, Phil will pack the links into the chat, uh, but that's basically it from me. And I hope Phil, I catched up some time. <laughs>